Okay, we're live. Welcome to uh, Ask Citizens Advice Manchester um, and people who've tuned into our Citizens Advice um, live streams recently will know my face. Uh, I'm Rosie and I'm the Partnership and Communications Lead um, here at Citizens Advice Manchester and today we're really really delighted to be um joined by mike kane mp so unfortunately without video but we do have sound which obviously is the most important thing so um thanks mike for for joining us today no, delighted rosie thanks for having me no problem at all so as per usual um uh, just to sort of cover the format for people who are joining us for the first time um, mike and i are going to have a, a little bit of a chat but um we do take questions live. So if you've got any questions for uh, either Mike or myself, um, please do drop them into the, the comments box underneath um, the video on whichever platform you're joining us from, um, and we will do our best to answer them. Um, but sort of going forward, um, just with our basically my own interests to start with, um, Mike, you are um, MP for Withinsure and Say At Least. Um, so how long have you been um, an MP? Uh, I came in at a by-election on the 14th of February 2014, so I'll be exactly uh, seven years old in a couple of uh, days' time, Rosie. It was Fantastic. as cold and snowy then as it is today. <laughs> it is definitely uh, feeling pretty Arctic outside. Um, well, I mean, obviously, the during your time in office, you've been um, a real wonderful supporter of Citizens Advice Manchester, and we're, we're always really very grateful for your support. And um, we've been talking recently because because of your support of our um, Keep the Lifeline campaign, which is related to universal credit. Um, what have your experiences been um, of, of universal credit for your constituents? Well, uh, Rosie, I'd, I'd say this. Uh, from February last year to March, we saw a 170% increase in inquiries uh, to my email address. Uh, so as soon as the pandemic struck, our workloads went through the roof, and I'm grateful. You know, you, su you know, we I support you, but you've supported me in in helping deal with some of that uh, caseloads. So that that literally means thirteen and a half thousand new uh, universal credit cases in Withinshaw uh, and Sale East alone uh, and many of those people probably claim a lot of them claiming um benefit for the first time in their life yeah absolutely i think um certainly uh, from our perspective we know that um 79 of the people who are contacting us about benefits um are people who are claiming for the first time or that's um or that that's the first time they really saw advice when it comes to benefits so we know that this is a, a really huge change for a lot of people um now our keep the lifeline campaign is very much focused around the 20 pound uplift that was announced um back at the start of the pandemic um to to support people um, and that's it's 20 pounds a week um which obviously about around about 80 pounds a month um, and that is due to come to an end um, in a couple of months' time. How do you feel that losing that £20 a week could impact on, on residents in with insurance, at least? Well, the Chancellor is dithering at the moment, which is um, not a little bit unlike him. We had a debate in the House a couple of weeks ago, an opposition day, where we uh, got a vote through uh, to maintain uh, the uplift. Uh, for me and for my constituency, I think that equates to around about £12.8 million uh, over the course of the next 12 months. So that's an awful lot of money uh, it, that, would, that would be lost to my constituents uh, if, it, if the op, op lift isn't, uh, isn't maintained. But most things, Rosie, I mean, I'm still hopeful that the government will change its mind. We just need Marcus Rashford to say something, um, the Prime Minister to give him a ring, and, and then hopefully we'll keep the uplift. But we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Absolutely. No, it would be great. You know, Marcus, if you are watching, because we know that probably he's a keen, keen supporter of Citizens Advice, do, do get on the phone. Um, so we know... Um, that uh, that sort of the, there are obviously, like I say, as we say, the concerns for for people who might uh, lose that uplift. Um, looking at sort of our statistics and our data, um, 
that can relate to sort of that could be three days worth of food or six days worth of energy costs when it comes to um, sort of being able to manage going forward. So obviously that is going to have a, a huge knock on effect um, for people. Um, and that's sort of that is across the northwest. Now, what um, in terms of sort of I know you you have a lot of concerns about sort of debt and, and financial stability um, in your constituency, particularly, but obviously just in, in the region in general. How how are you sort of um, feeling that people are going going to cope going forward? Well, I said to you before, Rosie, that as a member of parliament, I think the number one issue um, for people out there in my constituency is uh, is debt. And um, the, the last statistics we have from Step Change, which are now a couple of years out of date, and I spoke to them the other week and they are updating them. But I did, before the pandemic, have around about 3,000 families at, um, with 5,000 children in toxic debt, owing around about 24 million pounds to utility companies and payday loan uh, lenders. And it's interesting that when I do my advice surgeries every week, obviously online at the moment, no matter what the issue is, whether it be housing, benefit, domestic violence, uh, anything, uh, I now ask the question, um, do you have debt problems? And, and every time, nearly every time the answer uh, is is yes. That's going to have been exacerbated tenfold, I would say, uh, by the pandemic. Uh, you know, I need to see those statistics, but we're going to have to work out ways um, about how we um, help people uh, through this. I mean, chatting to the Residential Landlords Association, which is also based in my constituency in Sale, you know, we, we currently have the moratorium on uh, eviction, uh, but, you know, that's going to be lifted uh, soon as well. And I think there'll be a tsunami of, uh, you know, rent. Um, I know people usually prior to prioritise food uh, and rent, but we, we, we could be seeing an awful lot of homelessness. Um, people, no fault of their own, lose, losing their jobs because of the pandemic um, and, and being uh, evicted from uh, from their, their houses. So, so we need to be making sure that government are aware of what's coming down the line because uh, we're a long way from being out of this. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it's really important, as you say, sort of some of those knock on effects from um, from sort of uh, debt and sort of lo and getting behind financially. Um, Nanette Palmer's asked a question here about sort of wanting to know why single people get um, the twenty pound uplift and yet other uh, people uh, people with children would only get the same. Do you have any sort of understanding of the reasoning behind those decisions? I think that would be a better. Uh answer from uh, you Rosie particularly in terms of the IT what all I would say was if, if this pandemic had hit seven or eight years ago uh, the, the benefit system would not have been able to cope uh, at all uh, because it was so fragmented uh, and not computerized whatever your criticism of universal credit uh, government has had a tool that it, it has been able to adjust relatively quickly uh, in the light of the circumstances but I don't know the exact answer to Annette's question no, that's fair. Thank you very much for your honesty there. And I think you're quite right that actually um, for for whatever sort of concerns people have around the system, there are a lot of positives around universal credit as well. And that, you know, in terms of kind of keeping everything together and um, we certainly feel that while there is work to be done on universal credit as a system that actually is um, overall is, is a really positive move. Um, and it's just, again, it's, it's tweaks like this about keeping that uplift in place while there is a, there are additional vulnerabilities. Um, Nanette, what we would say to you is if you are concerned about your financial situation at all, or you feel like perhaps you're maybe not getting everything that you feel you're entitled to, it's absolutely worth giving us a call, speaking to one of our benefits advisors. They may have better answers for you um around um you know just checking that you're plugging into everything that you are uh, that you should be getting um because we don't want you to be missing out um and i wouldn't want to to profess to be a benefits expert so um I, I think it's probably best for you to get in touch with us you can um give us a call on our advice line which is 0808 um, or if you visit our website which is www.citizensadvicemanchester.org.uk um, there are a whole raft of ways that you can get in touch with us online as well so um, do go and take a look and, and make sure that you get in touch with us. Um, so going back Mike to, to sort of talk about finances and obviously the, um, the people that you're 
concerned about in your constituency um like you say it's sort of it, it kind of underpins everything really is there anything that you're seeing more of when it comes to sort of through coronavirus are there more concerns that people are coming to you with well i think the the the, the overriding thing when you take debt out of it is that South Manchester, Withenshaw in particular, is um, extraordinarily dependent, extraordinarily dependent on, on Manchester airports. Uh, and with the latest government quarantine um, of a fortnight that was announced the other week, uh, you know, the bottom now looks like it's falling out of the spring and summer market. So I think the pain in the aviation sector uh, and the, all the tens of thousands of jobs based around the airport is going to get more uh, severe. We already know there are thousands on HR1 notices uh, for redundancy. Now, there are opportunities, uh, you know, in logistics, which are growing and retail, which we know is booming uh, at the moment. So I, I am talking to individual companies and to Manchester Airport. So anywhere that, you know, employees are being lost, um, to the aviation sector, that we're talking to the Greater Manchester Economic Resilience uh, Fund, that they're talking to the DWP, and we're trying to keep those people in the labour market because that, you know, that's the best thing uh, for them at the moment. But the, I think there was a centre, yeah, it's the Centre for Cities uh, study on um, communities that will be most impacted uh, by uh, the pandemic. Um, obviously, wherever there's hospitality that will take a long time to recover. But the number one, um, the number one um, issue was the aviation industry. Uh, and I am currently Shadow Aviation and Maritime Minister. So I see it day in, day out, uh, not just locally, but nationally. Uh, and I'm holding the hand and talking to as many CEOs of local companies as I possibly can um, uh, currently um, to try and help them stay afloat. Yeah. Of course, that is a, it's a, a very big concern for people and like keeping hold of uh, of jobs in general, um, obviously for, for a lot of people. But as you say, particularly in an area where um, the airport does provide so much um, employment for people. Um, and again, just a, a plug for our services that we can help people um, if you are facing redundancy or you're concerned about your employment rights at all, um, please do get in touch with us um, and our advisors will be able to help you to, sort of, to find a solution. Um, do you feel when it comes to debt advice, we know that there's there can be quite a lot of stigma um, around sort of seeking support for, for debt advice. Do you sort of feel that there are there are barriers to, to people seeking debt advice at all? Uh, I think so. Um, despite how good the CAB are, and we do refer people, as you know, Rosie, there are other services, Christians Against Poverty, um, you know, the council have some services um, there's never quite the sort of central go to uh, line. But even if you did have that, you still have to convince people sometimes that they have a debt problem. You know, if they've got three thousand pound more on their credit card, then I think, you know, they've probably got a, a debt problem. We know there are something like 20 million uh, Britons who don't have five hundred pound in the bank. So as soon as a white goods, um, uh, you know, the white goods, the washing machine breaks down, they're having to to borrow, uh, and they're often borrowing unethically, either from the illegal payday lender, and sometimes even worse, the legal uh, ones. And you know that in my past role, I run the National Loan Sharks. Uh, operation which managed to persuade the David Cameron government, this was before I was an MP, um, to reduce the usurious rates of interest on those payday loans. It's very hard for the credit unions to compete, you know, these apps are so good, the marketing is so slick uh, with your Wongas and your quids in and your ocean finances, um, but we have to persuade people to if they're going to borrow, well, firstly, we have to people people to save wherever they can. Uh, but then if they're going to borrow, that they borrow ethically. And I work uh, very closely with Manchester Credit uh, Union and we've run campaigns in the constituency about getting companies and um, Withenshaw Hospital, which was a major win a couple of years back, to do payroll deduction at source uh, to help um, people uh, have a, a regular savings account with the credit union. That's fantastic because, as, as you say, sort of just finding those routes forward for people can be can be really vital. And obviously, we're 
we're delighted here um, at Citizens Advice to have seen in the last couple of days that there are new regulations being brought in to look at these sort of new uh, crop up of buy now, pay later kind of um, companies, which obviously look on the surface like a really great solution. Who doesn't want to, to get something now and figure out the, the solution further down the line? Um, but obviously what we're concerned about is that there isn't really a, a plan for how you pay later. That, you know, there's a lot of lack of regulation. So we're really pleased to see that there is going to be an an increase in that um, and sort of obviously having people like yourself who who support motions like that is is really really vital for people out there um what would like obviously we are the advisors but as um as you as a sort of someone going out and, and meeting the public um in your sort of day-to-day -day role what would you say to somebody who was concerned about their their personal finances and, and how they should find a way forward Oh, firstly, seek, seek help. Um, debt uh, causes huge, huge uh, stress. Uh, sometimes people don't realise it. It's also, I think, a major factor for relationship uh, breakdown as well, which causes huge stress because then you've got housing problems, uh, children problems, and all the other things. Uh, and we know that um, you know we see uh, the foundation for families show that the lower socioeconomic groups in, in society are much more likely uh, to break up, and family units to break up uh, because debt is, and poverty is at the heart of is at the heart of that so i think the key thing is to you know to seek an agency uh, to help yourselves you know some of the churches are doing their own debt counseling uh, now um, talk to your utility companies uh, you, you know i've seen people come to my surgery with the brown paper envelopes that they're too frightened to to open so you can get agencies now that will you know step change uh, money advice others who will uh, take the stress and the burden of even opening the envelopes uh, and get help you get back on track so you know there's no need to be ashamed it happens to so many you know it's happening to uh, a raft of middle class people i would say at the, at the moment you know often um, directors of companies uh, single entity companies um, who pay themselves in dividend have found that you know uh, that, that uh, their p p their p a y e so small so their furlough uh, has been very small indeed uh, and they've had to really struggle and I'm encouraging everybody uh, who's in debt to to seek help it's the as soon as you humanly can yeah absolutely I think that like like you say it really is the the key message and and particularly that um, as you've already alluded to that. In order to sort of consider yourself in debt, I think everybody kind of has a different version of what that means to them. And and if you've got, you know, if you if you haven't maxed out all of your credit cards yet, then you might not consider yourself to be massively in debt. Whereas obviously for us, we we would probably say at that point, if if you're even sort of thinking like that, then you probably need to get some support when it comes to your finances. Um, we know that across the country, around about one in seven households has fallen behind on at least one household bill, um, if not more, um, already. And obviously, we are anticipating that that, that could only get worse um, if we, as we sort of continue through the pandemic and through, through lockdown. Um, and we know that, again, sort of just uh, referring back again to that sort of keep the lifeline campaign that we're running um, without that £20 uplift um, we think that around 75% of households would be in a negative budget so essentially they wouldn't have enough money to meet um, their their household costs um, if that, that uplift isn't maintained um, I think it's around about 40% at the moment are already in a negative budget and, and that um, would just increase. So, again, if you are struggling, if you are behind, um, if you're sort of you've fallen behind on at least one bill, get in touch with us before things things spiral. It's really easy for for money and for finances to kind of get a little bit out of control. So um, do get in touch with us by whatever means um, you feel necessary. Um, just a reminder as well, I know people are kind of coming in and joining us as and when uh, through this live broadcast. So if you do have any questions for either us or for, or for Mike, um, please do drop them into the comments box. Um, 
Mike, you sort of mentioned very um, briefly there um, around sort of utility bills and getting in touch with your, your utility provider. Um, obviously, fuel poverty and sort of people just struggling to keep up with their energy bills um, is something that we see day in, day out. Again, is that something that you're seeing reflected in your constituency? Uh, of course. Um, we're spending, Rosie, more time at home than we ever imagined uh, we would. So that means... Um, you know, fuel bills are going up and that uh, adversely impacts on lower income uh, households and particularly people in the receipts of either furlough or universal credit. So, um, and often people prioritise their food uh, and their, um, their their rent rather than their utility bills, but they begin to rack up very, uh, very quickly. So, you know, there's a plethora of things that I would love to see happen uh, you know one if not just build back to where we were but if we're going to build back better that we make our homes more energy efficient that ties in very nicely to a green agenda uh, about being more uh, eco-friendly uh, and i'm talking to the local housing group as well now about looking at uh, uh, taking fossil fuels out of local homes and seeing if we can provide a hydrogen uh, alternative and combine heat and power um, sources. We, we need to think uh, much more widely th uh, than we do uh, because people are racking up these energy bills uh, in, in, in the current climate. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, so. Um, as I say, um, we are doing quite a lot of work around um, energy advice and, and fuel poverty um, at Citizens Advice Manchester and, and things like there's obviously a lot of new initiatives um, like the Green Homes Grant and the Eco Grants that people um, can apply for so not just talking about cost but as you say about energy efficiency as well um, and we would encourage people that if you have any sort of questions we've obviously held our own Facebook Live um, a couple of weeks ago with um, EcoServe, who support with the, the um, tech side of all of the, the grants agenda. Um, and uh, that was a really interesting um, conversation. So if you, if you didn't catch it, do go back and, um, and catch up um, on that conversation. But also our energy advisors can help to talk you through some of those grants that might be available to you um, and your household. Um, and we are working um, quite closely now um, with Electricity Northwest um, to make sure that people are getting all the support that they're entitled to. Um, first and foremost, um, priority services registers, which I think not everybody is aware of when it comes to support. And that's not financial support, but it is actually in the case of a power outage um, in the area that they can offer uh, additional support to people who might be vulnerable in some way. So that might be that you've got children under five. Um, it might be that you've got a health condition, particularly if you need to keep sort of medicines cold and, and in the fridge. Um, and if your fridge goes off, then obviously that becomes an issue. Um, so they can offer extended support. And then again, we were, we've now got a dedicated team um, working with Electricity Northwest to provide that necessary advice. So again, if you do have queries, um, then please do get in touch with us um, about um, your energy supply and how we can kind of um, take that forward. Um, Just on a macro level, Rosie, UK homes are some of the most, you know, energy inefficient, you know, in the world. So, you know, there is massive opportunity here uh, to retrofit, to retrain people, to get people uh, doing this work. And I know it's controversial, but on a personal level, uh, Octopus are coming with my smart meter on Monday morning. So um, yeah, thank God I'm on a half term from Parliament for a few days. So I can be in for it. You can uh, start watching your your energy supply ticking round. Like uh, you'll you'll it'll soon change the way you feel um, about you know not filling your kettle more than what you need and uh, and sort of taking that your shower down by a minute every day we've got a huge amount of energy efficiency tips that we can offer you mike so if you are if you need some energy advice our advisors are here to help you on that front um we've had a question from um suzanne so who asks how do you think we can work together better so between organizations like the residential landlords association local authorities and citizens advice um to help stem any potential tide of evictions in the future um and help protect those at risk i think that's a great question yeah it is a great question and thanks to suzanne for it um 
I think the key, I mean, I, I spoke to the Residential Landlords Association, uh, I think about a fortnight ago, uh, Rosie. They're really worried about when the moratorium uh, lifts. Uh, we're not talking about mass landlords here. We're, pe we're talking about people with a, you know, an inherited property or two or three properties that they, uh, they rent out, and most are socially responsible. I know there are some bad eggs uh, out there, but probably not the um, 20, 30, 40,000 who are members of the RLA. Uh, and so we need to sort of persuade government that we cannot have another major homelessness crisis. But I want to praise the government for getting people off the streets uh, during the pandemic and everyone uh, abed. And we know that Mayor Burnham has made this, you know, a huge clarion call of his morality over the last few years and done an extra excellent job raising hundreds of thousands of pounds for, you know, every bed, uh, a bed every night uh, charity which you know, I've helped uh, fundraise uh, for, but government needs to do something structural. If you are working, uh, you are paying your bills, you're getting on in life, and then you know, 12 months down the line, because of a pandemic, because you've been furloughed or you've been made redundant, um, and you're about to be put out on, that, on the streets, government needs to come up with a system uh, to, um, to alleviate that, that works with local councils, that works with registered, uh, landlords that works with the private rented sector as well uh, because people will be put, be putting be put out on the street through no fault of their own uh, and so we need some sort of jubilee idea some sort of um, joined up coordinated approach uh, and i've been desperately trying to um, uh, get uh, on to treasury questions in the house to ask the chancellor uh, about that i know treasury are looking at something now um, but we need to have a bit more meat on the bone of the scheme that they're going to come forward with. Yeah, it's really positive to hear that there is sort of so there are conversations happening there, and there are people sort of really fighting for the rights of private renters. Because also at Citizens Advice, we know that uh, around one in three private renters have, have lost income because of um, the because of the pandemic. And then because of that, sort of around about half a million people um, are then sort of behind, have fallen behind on their rent. And as you say, in, in a private rented situation, that can become sort of quite, quite serious quite quickly. And, and we are we are sort of worried about that that potential knock on and the, the risk of, of many people sort of losing their homes, as you say, through no fault of their own. Um, so it's, it's really positive to hear um, that you're that you're working on that and that you're you're supporting that um a positive step forward um just going back to to energy advice um briefly sort of again um and, and sort of about fuel poverty um are you concerned about sort of the energy price cap um we've sort of seen that in in april we're expecting quite a lot of people to have an increase in their um energy bills that's obviously come out in the last couple of days. What are your, your feelings about that? And, and is there anything sort of happening locally that you're aware of? Um, An energy price consider? cap, Rosie, do you want to expand? <laughs> um, sorry, yes. Yeah. So there's uh, obviously people, um, We there has been an energy price cap in place. Yeah. Um, and um, they, that is now sort of shifting. So come the 1st of April, um, people, the, uh, a lot of people will be seeing an increase in their, their energy bills. Some people could be seeing close to about £100 a year, uh, potentially, um, going forward. Um, do you have, maybe not necessarily about the, the price cap specifically, but do you have any sort of feelings about um, people in the inability to afford to pay their fuel bills? And well, what we can do to support people in that way? Yeah, I, 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 well, I still think it goes back to what we said originally in keeping the uplift to the universal credit, which uh, clearly my side of the aisle is supporting uh, in Parliament. Uh, the, the, the problem with energy increases, as you well know uh, better than me, is that they affect the poorest far more proportionally uh, than they do higher uh, income groups. But in the light of this pandemic, we've had high income groups that are now claiming universal credit for the first time uh, and they're beginning to see, uh, you know, the price of their energy, uh, you know, has been going through the roof 
uh, the last through year, the last few years, both metaphorically and literally, <laughs> in the sense of, uh, of energy inefficiencies. So you know, government have got to be mindful again. Like I say, the the, the private rental sector is worried about a tsunami of debt uh, when the eviction moratorium uh, finishes, uh, and then with the pr energy price cap lifting as well. If we see energy prices uh, going through the roof, it will be you know another huge burden. Uh, for low-income families to to have to deal with. So again, um, you know, utility bills are massively important. You know, the, the first rule I remember um, is being inspired by a councillor who was a CAB volunteer back in the eighties called Jerry Carroll uh, down in Withenshaw, and he said the the first priority is always keeping your roof on your head, but you've got to keep your bellies fed and your uh, 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 and, and you've got to be warm too. So they are the competing priorities, and there are professionals out there who can help you uh, juggle uh, those priorities uh, but you know people having enough income in the first place is, is going to be key key to this and, and key to the fact that the job market is a lot harder at the moment the last few years uh, particularly where we are in Manchester there has been a, a buoyant jobs market you know I've had airport city Amazon move in DHL expand we've got thousands of jobs coming with the hook group um, you know the, the 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 problem for the dwp was making sure that people were uh, had the right training uh, to get into these jobs we know we've got uh, thousands of digital jobs so i'm working with digital companies uh, at the moment and the dwp about getting people to retrain who may be lo losing aviation jobs you know, we had the Thomas Cook debacle, the Monarch debacle, the Flyby, it went down. So we, we, we've seen big structural changes that we've been able to deal with, um, you know, through partner agency working, particularly in Withenshaw over the last few years. But this is bigger than anything we've seen. And we're just going to have to work harder and smarter uh, to make sure we keep people in the jobs market, which will be the key uh, to alleviating uh, poverty. Absolutely. Um, very well said. I think uh, we've just had another question from from Hayley there who says all the different energy prices are so confusing is there any help to know uh, which is the best um, so I think that's that's probably for me um, in the sense that um, our energy advice team again are, are really helpful so if you are if you are um, confident on the internet which some some people are really confident with finding their way around the internet um, and if you are then um, citizens advice does have an online um, energy comparison tool so you can um, go on take a look understand what is the best um, what is the best possible price um, and could compare we would obviously um, advise people as well that you should be checking your your energy tariff um, or and your supplier probably around once a year because prices change so often and, and things fluctuate definitely check that you're still getting the best possible deal um, so do check out um, our website for a comparison tool but again we know that digital digital um, inclusion and um, opportunity is is not everybody's um, strong point and if you are not confident online then again give our energy advice team a call and um, they can help you to find your way through um, like ha essentially to check switch and save on your energy bills so they'll be able to check that you are with the um, uh, best supplier and um, on the best tariff so again some people say to us I really I like my supplier I'm loyal I I want to stay with them, but they might have a better price um, available. They might have a different tariff that's available that you could be um, saving money. So um, do give our um, energy advice team a call and they will be able to help you find which is the best um, tariff for you. Um, and they'll also be able to talk to you about not just um, prices, but one we know that it's really important to save money. We know that um, customer service is a really massive factor as well in terms of your, your energy supply and being able to, to get the support that you need when you need it. Um, and so they can also talk to you about, um, we have a, a, a sort of a tool that essentially looks at customer service ratings, that's all. Um, uh, so we've, we've got a ranking system, um, again, freely available on the Citizens Advice website. Um, so you can check out how your energy supplier compares um, and whether or not you should be with somebody else. So hopefully that's a comprehensive answer.
for you, Hayley. Um, and, you know, it's just advice to you, Mike. Maybe you should uh, make sure that you check switch and save on a regular basis. I would say that, Rosie, but, you know, I'm in a fortunate position. Um, you know, I've had good jobs and uh, I'm well paid. Uh, I, I have an ethical uh, position on energy as well. Uh, I've just reminded that it was actually Ed Miliband's policy, uh, Labour's policy at the general election, uh, that uh, the Conservatives stole the energy price cap. I think they said it was positively communist uh, at the time now, looking back. Uh, but uh, it was a, it was a, they stole our clothes on that. And I, I just happen to uh, use energy companies uh, that are ethical. Um, so I use Octopus. It was the cooperative before that because what I thought I was getting the better price tariff. Uh, and two, I, I'm just not sure the private energy market has been good for consumers uh, in getting the best prices. Uh, you know, you, they put you on a good price quickly, and then before you know it, uh, you, you're back on a, you've drifted up onto a high price. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think there's an ethical market out there as well that people should look at if, if they possibly can do so. Yeah, absolutely. I think, that, as you say, for those of us who are sort of feeling comfortable enough to, to uh, bear that in mind, but you'd be very pleased to know that Octopus do rank very highly on our customer service um, chart as well. They are uh, the fourth top provider in the company, in the company, in the country. Um, so and they, use no, they use no fossil fuel as well. It's all uh, green energy. So it's, it's gas from waste and it's, uh, it's uh, electricity from solar as well. So. That's really fantastic. And like you say, in, in terms of looking forward, we are, we are as, a, as an organisation, Citizens Advice, are very focused on obviously energy and, and uh, sort of trying to make ourselves um, working towards a carbon neutral country and sort of um, and helping to sort of reduce um, our carbon emissions. But obviously by doing that in, in and sort of trying to be part of the conversation in terms of how do we do that and yet make that sort of energy affordable for people. As we say, people are already struggling with their bills when it comes to sort of your standard kind of um, energy supply. So if we're going to sort of um, move towards a, a greener way of, of supplying energy, that how do we make that more affordable for people um, as a whole? Um, but it sounds like that's very much something that, that you're on board with overall. So, um, but it's great again to know that you're you're moving us in the right direction. I think. Um, I'm going to sort of just um, I'm going to uh, ask the the audience that you know if if you do have any further questions, do get them in for us. We'll we'll be here for another couple of minutes. Mike, was there anything else that you kind of wanted to to talk about um, when it comes to sort of life in Manchester and um, your sort of experience as a Manchester MP? Um, well, I mean, I'm a Withenshaw lad, born and bred, so, I, I, you know, I'm extraordinarily um, lucky that, you know, I represent uh, my hometown seat. Uh, and while, you know, there are uh, challenges, uh, you know, I, I just see such wonderful community spirits. You know, during the pandemic, um, you know, I've seen so many churches and community groups uh, step up. Uh, to help uh, with ensure good neighbours, um, making sure that uh, people weren't isolated. Uh, it's been a wonder to see, and I think, Rosie, you're going to come along to my International Women's Day, hopefully, um, in a few weeks' time, and we'll be celebrating particularly the role of women in helping us get through uh, the sort of champions of the community that have helped us get uh, through this and, and and as part of my own corporate social responsibility I've been working with with Ensure Waste Warriors who, who've had, literally had uh, dozens and hundreds of people out over the last few months cleaning up with Ensure, uh, getting rid of the rubbish, uh, building bike paths and pathways so people can enjoy what is a beautiful uh, environment so you know I, I, I've just found it really really uh, heartening um, the last uh, few months, despite the gloom. Uh, and, you know, I got to go to the vaccination centre just before Christmas, which was one of the first at Woodhouse Park Lifestyle Centre. And I saw our older generation uh, coming out, doing their duty. People who've been shielding for, you know, eight months, nine months, 
you know, coming out, uh, greeting their neighbours, socially distanced, of course, and taking their back seat. Uh, and a real, it was really emotional, I thought. You know, it, we begin to see a light at the end of this, this, this horrible uh, tunnel that we've um, been in. Uh, and, and, you know, Withenshaw was one of the first communities um, vaccinating uh, and doing that. So there is still potential once our aviation industry uh, takes off again, literally, uh, the hook group moving in. We know that our logistics firms are bursting at capacity and taking staff on. Our retail firms are, are taking staff on. You know, we are a key worker seat. And, you know, so many people have stepped up to keep our buses and trams and taxis and NHS going during this period. So I, I, I cannot be more proud uh, 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 as the MP for this area that has, has really uh, risen to the challenge. Wonderful. That's a, such a lovely note, I think, to, to close on. And, and yes, I absolutely will be at your uh, International Women's Day event. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, and for people who want more information about that, I know that there's been stuff on Twitter today um, from Withenshaw Women looking at. Um, so you can book yourself a space. So if you are in Withenshaw and you'd like to join us on March the 8th for International Women's Day, um, do come along. It, should, it looks like it's going to be a fantastic um, event. Um, on that note, I think um, we don't seem to have any more questions. So I just wanted to say thank you again, Mike, for your support of uh, for of the Keep the Lifeline campaign specifically, but just of Manchester Citizens Advice in general. Um, it's it's really great to have you behind us. Um, thank you very much for your time today. I know it's been a really long day for you um, in bill committees. Um, so I really appreciate you uh, finishing up your day with us. Um, and um, thanks very much to anyone who's joined us in the broadcast as well. It's been really wonderful to have you. So thank you very much. And uh, and good night, I guess. Good night. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. Good night, everybody. Good night.